So far, we've talked about the vector fields produced by single objects, like a single charge or a single mass or a single bit of current or a single light bulb or something like that. What happens if there are multiple light bulbs, multiple charges? Well, if and only if the field is linear, we can use a trick called superposition. Now, what is linear? Linear means the field strength is proportional to whatever's causing it, which might be the charge or the mass or the luminosity of the light bulbs, or whatever it might be. So, for example, the electric field is proportional to the charge. I mean, gravitational field is proportional to the mass. If it was proportional to charge squared or mass cubed or anything else, this will not work. However, luckily, many of the most important fields are actually linear. There are some that are not. For example, the field of fluid flow and wind is not linear. Uh, electric fields or radiation fields in certain materials are not linear. Uh, for example, in some crystals, you get so-called nonlinear crystals. Uh, electromagnetic waves will interfere with each other. Um, and that's a very rich field of research called nonlinear physics. But for the moment, we'll do the simple case where everything's linear. So field proportional to whatever causes it. No squared, no square roots, no signs, no other complicated functionality. In this case, the total field is just the sum of the fields of the different components. So, for example, if we have a large positive charge here and a small positive charge there, and we want to measure the electric field here, then there's going to be a large component coming over there and a small component, doubly small, firstly because the charge here is small, and secondly because it's far away in that direction. How do you add them up? Well, you can do it with a parallelogram. So draw a little imaginary parallelogram. And that gives you that. Or the way I prefer to do it is simply shift one of the arrows over. So let's say we take this arrow and we shift it over to here, so it's head to tail with the other one. Once again, that gives us the total electric field. Similarly, for magnetic fields, gravitational fields, radiation fields, anything else where things are linear. And if you have more than two charges, more 100 charges, or anything like that, you just keep on adding them up. That's how you do it graphically. You can also do it by components. So if, for example, you know that the field from here is, uh, let's call it x1, y1, Z1 components, and the field from here is X2, Y2, Z2. So that's the um, E1, E2. And the total electric field will just be X1 plus X2, Y1 plus Y2, etc. So you work out the field at that point, as we've seen in the previous videos, and then just add the two components together.